Yo, welcome back to another edition of the Heating Up Podcast. We have the man himself, Andrew Gibson, and myself. Some know him as Shot Doc, but nope. most know me as Luke. Yeah. Most know me as Luke. Um, and Where then we're mi- minus one at the moment, minus Wes. Uh, he will be with us in the interview. Correct. But, um, yeah, this week got a got a great episode for you guys. Got um, – Got some weekly news, talk about Super Bowl, a little bit of NBA, and we got a great guest, Steve Peralt of Bleacher Report, uh, coming on later in the show. Um, great guest. He was a great guest for us. Oh, yeah, and you might be able to tell we're remote this week yes. due to some uh, due to some difficulties, but we are we're making it happen. Yeah, making it happen. You got to... We just want to make sure we have an episode each week for you guys, and especially this week with a um, great guest like Steve. Oh yes, you'll understand why we wanted Steve on so bad, and we were mm-hmm. just we're appreciative of him coming on. Yes. But before the interview with Steve, we're going to talk about the Super Bowl, and we're going to do some NBA updates. And after the interview with Steve, we'll just wrap up the show. So, a little uh, table of uh, contents before, for you. Go ahead. Before we get started, I wanted to. I uh, give a shout out to my headset, <laughs> my PlayStation headset. Barely. Yeah. yeah. How loosely do those fit on your head? Uh, they're pretty good. They're, they're actually not. a very good headset. Yeah, they work well. See. But anyways. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah, we'll move right into the Super Bowl. Our first kind of reactions on the Super Bowl. I mean. Was it didn't feel like a Super Bowl to me? No, I mean, no, it felt to me, it felt like a Super Bowl, but mm. it just it, it didn't the way the Chiefs played. I guess, yeah. I felt like they didn't play like we know they have been playing the whole season, the and Chiefs, therefore the Bucks ran away with it. The Chiefs, um, they showed up, yeah, to the game, as, and then as uh, far as they went, well, I. I knew the game was in jeopardy for the Chiefs whenever the Brady Gronk connection started to happen, and then I was like, "This, this is throwbacks." Mm-hmm. And then the first quarter was good. I thought the Chiefs yeah. were gonna be able to pull it out, and like, uh, not they weren't down to where to like, oh, they're gonna make a comeback, or all oh, this game is isn't over. But it was yeah. seven to three or something, and I was like, the Chiefs are still very much could win by twenty. Yes. But then it got to 14. I thought to three. that one, it was, I thought it, I mean, what was the score at halftime? You remember? It might have been 21 to six. I cannot remember. Something like that. But I thought the Chiefs would come back, to be honest with you. But when it was 21 to six at half, I was, I was still locked in. Was, but then the, the game was up for grabs. Then Tampa went and scored another one. I was like, yeah. The thing that, the thing that sucks for the Chiefs is that Mahomes ran like 437 yards or something like that. Yes. Like not, not for rush yards, but just yeah, it's just like, like just ran all over the field. Yeah, man, he did not have a clean pocket all night. No, and we it's like all watching know high school quarterback. It is, and Mahomes wasn't healthy. Turf toe didn't help, no. and he had surgery. Went well, so we all knew how hurt he was. But he still continued yes. to play. And if he had a clean pocket, I mean, it's probably a different game. A much different game. Um, Tampa's but, defense is raw. That's what I was about to say. Credit the Bucks defense, though they they came to play ball. Yeah, that's the biggest. That's the biggest. That's not Brady. It's not that offense. It's that defense yeah. came to play. Most definitely. I. I mean, but it was cool to see Brady now lead all. Of course, lead every all players in Super Bowl wins, but he leads every franchise, every team by himself. Yeah, every franchise. No franchise has more Super Bowl wins than Tom Brady. Which do you is think uh, they can go, barring free agent draft stuff? Do you think they could go back to back? I think they can, but it'll be much tougher. Yeah, it could be. The, this is one year that I think it could be the same Super Bowl next year. Yeah. I never really thought that be. before, but. You to know. me, there's no there's no real powerhouse in the NFC like there is the AFC. No. no, there was. We said it on our playoff episode that any team of the NFC could come and yeah. make, a, make a difference in the playoffs and hope maybe make a Super Bowl yeah. run, except for, uh, sorry, Wes, but Washington, I don't think they could have done it. That's about the only team. Yeah. Um, but I think like going into next season, real early prediction, I like um I like the Bucks again. Mm-hmm. I think the Seahawks will turn it around. 
Unless they trade Wilson. Yeah, unless they trade Wilson. And uh, Packers, maybe. Maybe. And the Rams picking up yeah. Stafford. I think they'll make a run for it. They got to be in win-now mode. Yes, they have to be. Another team that, if they can get their defense right, is that nobody's thinking about right now, and if they re-sign their quarterback, is Dallas. Yes. If they can get that defense right, that offense can yeah. score points, man. I hope they don't. Uh, I mean, I'm not a Dallas fan, but I Neither. hope they don't do rebuild. They, they've been yeah. talking about rebuild or keep trying to win. I hope they keep trying to win because they got a really good team when they're no, out No, I don't want Dallas to be good. I'm just saying, like. That's what's best for them. Yeah, they're not Super Bowl team. I'm just saying they could they could be good. Yes, I agree. With but that. yeah, um, so Tom Brady gets some ring number seven. Yeah, wraps up the NFL season. Glad they made it through the season. We mentioned that in the interview, and then uh, so that wraps up some NFL talk for a while until we get around in uh, yeah. draft season. We'll try to keep a little update and here and free there. Free agency, of course. Yeah, free agency. That'll be popping. That'll be popping. But we want to bring up just how the NBA is going. And if you don't pay attention to the standings, you can get it here. We're going to go over the standings in each conference and who we think is fake and who we think is actually a legit team. Is real. That's right. So let's start with the East. Let's start with the East. We got the Philadelphia 76ers at number one at 18 and seven. Milwaukee Bucks, 16 and nine. Third, Brooklyn Nets, 15 and 12. Four, the Boston Celtics at 12 and 11. Five, the Toronto Raptors at 12 and 13. Indiana Pacers, 12 and 13. Charlotte Hornets, 12 and 14. And Atlanta Hawks, 11 and 13. Mm -hmm. Now, the first three teams out are the Knicks, Bulls, Heat. Yes. Thoughts? Um, I think the Heat will end up being back in there just because they got Jimmy back. Jimmy's been out a lot of the season. Yeah. Uh, they'll they're starting to climb their way back in. They're only ten and fourteen. The eight seed is eleven and thirteen. So yeah, I mean it's nothing crazy. And the eight, the eight will... team is six and a half out. I mean six and yeah. a half games, and then uh, Miami seven and a half. Yeah, I mean, and, and as you see already, Toronto started off at the bottom of the conference, and they're already at fifth. Yeah, at twelve and thirteen. I knew they were going to get back in there. Um, they just had to find it. I think as far as Philadelphia, Milwaukee, Brooklyn, Boston, Toronto, Indiana. I think they're all pretty much the top six, and the Heat could slide in there and move Indiana or somebody out like that. But I think those are the top six, and then uh, the Heat will be a seven, make the seventh, and then I think that last spot is up for grabs between the the Hornets, Hawks, and Knicks, Atlanta. Oh, and Bulls. I do no, think the Bulls. I, I like Chicago better than the Knicks. All of the yeah, Knicks are playing good. I like Chicago. Really, the teams that don't have a chance are Cleveland, Orlando, Washington, and Detroit. I say Washington. They don't have a chance. They have some of the best talent, but it's going to be awfully hard. It's going to be hard from here. Yeah. Because they... I mean, Cleveland's one of those teams, too, that they're playing good ball and have a lot of young stars. They just don't have enough. But they don't yet. have enough for that hump. They'll get there, but they don't yes. have enough to get over that hump. Correct. Yeah. But I wanted to bring up Philly is eight and two in their last 10, which is they're hot. huge. And then, um, the Celtics have been f struggling a little bit. But they've that's had a lot they've of injuries. injuries. They yeah. have had so, Jalen yeah. out for a week and a half. Yes. Uh, Jason Tatum was out for two weeks, and now Marcus Smart is going to be out for a uh, amount of time. And yeah. um, a name that's not well known is Peyton Pritchard. He's he's a rookie, but he's he's, he's big time on that team, and he was out for two weeks. Yes. So, I mean, once they find that team back together, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. No, yeah, I, I really like uh, Pritchard. He can be. He and then the Hornets are hot right now, too. LaMelo. Yeah, yeah, I think the Hornets can make it. I mean, I think the biggest key, I mean, LaMelo is obviously playing up to what he can right now, you know. Yeah. I think the biggest key for them is Hayward. Um, Hayward's good this year. He's that leadership they need. He's that consistent guy. He's going to get you 20 to 25 a night. He's playing good ball, efficient. I think he's the player that, the Hornets and lean on when it I've counts. watched I've watched the Hornets last three games and you know what's crazy is like they were struggling at the beginning of the season but this is like not to be funny but when Cody Zeller came back they got good I never thought he'd be this big a piece but he no. gets a lot of minutes he does and he plays really good minutes yes he does he's good I so mean he's is, not like outstanding but 
be solid. Right. And that's your Eastern Conference, right? They're pretty yeah. much the top six are, pre- are are locked. And it's up to that seven and eight seed. It could be up to five different teams. Exactly. So moving into the Western Conference, we got the Utah Jazz at number one at 20 and five. The LA Lakers, number two at 20 and six. LA Clippers at number three, 18 and eight. Phoenix Suns, number four, 15 and nine. Fifth, Portland Trailblazers, 13 and 10. Six, the Spurs, 14 and 11. Seven, Denver Nuggets, 13 and 11. And wrapping up the Western Conference at eight is the Golden State Warriors. Mm-hmm. So you got a couple, four teams that are still in single digit losses. I don't want to say we called it, but a lot of people called it. But it was talked about a lot on this show, the Phoenix Suns. Yes, they are hot, and it's it's that Chris Paul effect. That's what it, it is. is. That I mean, he's a true leader, uh, taking a lot of those young Sun players and really, you know, helping them win, helping them learn how to learn how to win. Right. And, you know they're they're playing they're playing good ball right now. Every single player that's in that Suns organization has never been yes. around a winning culture except yeah. Chris Paul, and he's teaching them that culture. Yeah. So, and, and then yeah. um, so the Suns are hot. Another team is the dang Utah Jazz, man. They don't yeah, they're, lose. They're hot. They're hot. They're I mean they're a lot to make the playoffs. Obviously. Nine and one in their last ten. Yeah, they are rolling. Donovan Mitchell can can straight hoop. Um, he's letting people know. Uh, that, letting Shaq know. That was my sleeper MVP. He probably he won't get it, but that was my sleeper MVP when we first did those awards. He might uh, be the dang Western Conference MVP. Yeah, he, he's playing good ball, man. And then right after that, you got the Lakers, Clippers, Suns. Although I think those are all, I'm not going to say locks for the playoffs, but your playoff favorites to make it. Yeah, Blazers uh, are about where they are every season. Yeah, Blazers will probably make it. Um, and then and then it comes down. I think Denver will end up making it. Um, and They're those other two. Right yeah, San Antonio and Golden State. Again, the, the they'll probably be like bottom of the conference. Yeah. And that's where those other teams that are not quite in, it's like Sacramento, Memphis, Dallas, New Orleans, and Houston, they I all think, come in. I think Dallas is going to climb their way into a playoff spot. I do too. I, they've been skidding, but I think they'll. They start off real slow. Uh, they're gonna get right. Yeah, they're gonna. I watched. Get right. I watched them last night when they played the Hawks, and then the what this weekend when they played. I forgot. Oh, it was the Warriors. They yeah. are. They're. They're not. They're doing what they weren't doing at the beginning of the year: is finding ways to win. When yeah, at the beginning of the year they were just losing games. Like they were losing games yeah, they should have yeah. won, and but now they're winning games, finding a way to win. And it's uh, Luca's yes. finding a way to win, really. Yeah, he's he's playing good ball. Um, but I think at the bottom of that Western Conference, I think it's a lot of teams that can make it. Like I, they're all neck and neck. Like yeah. Sacramento, Memphis, New Orleans, Houston, Golden State, San Antonio, and uh, that Golden Dallas State. team. They're all neck and neck. And I think I, I hope Golden State makes it though. Yeah, me too. Man, Steph's the best player to watch in the league. It's weird that they don't went have- off that decade that they had, uh, not decade, that five years of dominance. But like, it's it's crazy to say now that they deserve to to be there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if they, if they have Clay, they're, they're a lock for the. Playoffs. Oh man, top four lock. Clay makes them so much better. Like, and it'd be the same way with Steph. Like, yeah. if Steph was out, or honestly, the same way with Draymond. He's that big. Draymond had a big rushing. game Saturday. He had yeah. one of the Draymond games where he had like four points yes. and almost a triple double in four other cat. I mean, three other yes. categories. So he doesn't care about nothing but winning. No, no other shockers in the West. Yeah. Um, the Spurs they don't really have as much talent as his other teams, but we all know how they're coached. Mm-hmm. They have a winning culture there. So, I mean, it's just like the East. I think the top five are probably yeah. locks. Yeah. I think Denver can slip into that top five easy. Yeah. Uh, Golden State could slip into sixth. And then the Kings and the dang Grizzlies or Mavericks can move into seven or eight. You never know. Yeah. But that was pretty much the Western Conference. And yeah. that wraps up the standings talk. That's yeah. just an update on the that's league and where everybody's we try at. To do. I think that's weekly. something we should try to do. Like, well, no, maybe in like the next three to four weeks. Every two weeks. Yeah, give them an update. It's like six games in between time, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, 
so we'll move into our interview now with uh, Steve Peralt. We had a t- minor difficulty at the beginning of the show. We were recorded on Zoom. We downloaded it from Zoom. And then we get back and then our introduction where we introduced him into the interview was not there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. We brought Steve Peralt onto our show. Steve is a senior, uh, I think a senior programmer at Bleach Report. Yeah. He's been there for a couple of years now. He also runs the biggest Boston Red Sox podcast called Section 10, run by Barstool Sports. He's the producer there. Um, I'm not going to give too many details about Steve, but he grew up in Boston. He's, he knows the Boston area, so we talk about Boston sports, what it's like up there. And, you know, and Steve, he's on radio a lot, so you could t- you, you just enjoy listening to him. And I, I was unable to be in the interview, but um, I listened to it, and he's just like, you'll be locked in the whole episode, like the, the whole, whole interview. Episode. He's just, he's just a great talker and he knows his stuff. Like right. he's, uh, he's funny. He uh, explains stuff well. And he's, you know, huge Boston fan. He's a huge right. Boston sports fan. When we were interviewing him, we did not know how big of a deal he was at Bleach Report. Like he's yes. one of the top dogs and we didn't even know it. Yes. Like works daily with the app and everything yes. like that. So. Notifications that you get has probably come from Steve. Yes, which is yeah, think which about is that. insane <laughs> to think about. Yeah. So, but we won't go any more about his job at Bleach Report. We'll let him explain it for you. I introduced intro, introduced introduced Steve at the beginning, and then asked him what it was like growing up in a sports dominated city, and that's kind of where the interview starts. He start he starts talking about the Red Sox, and then gets into the other ones. So, we'll take it from here. I asked Steve what it's like growing up in a sports-dominated city. Here's Steve Peralt. And then the Red Sox obviously break the curse. Nothing's going to top that. And I remember even thinking that at the age of 14, I'm like, nothing's going to top this feeling as a fan, and I'm only 14. It's kind of weird because you know you have a lot of fandom left, but (laughs) you know nothing's going to top the Red Sox breaking the curse in, in 2004. So since then, though, it's been pretty awesome. I mean, 07 was a ton of fun um that was senior year of high school I spent basically every dollar that I earned that year on playoff tickets um and then moving down the line 2013 was a ton of fun got to go to a couple of those playoff games Patriots just dominating that entire time and then uh I mean yeah the Pats had two second separate dynasties like that was ridiculous yeah it's it's insane how long they went yeah so that was awesome I'm not really a, a hockey guy I call it sticky puck I don't really care about hockey but like the Bruins winning the Stanley Cup was cool uh in 2011 yeah. it's like all right why not like the the watching hockey playoffs is fun because i know exactly what's on the line i know what game it is it's like during the season i'm like how many points did that count for i don't know yeah um but no it, it's been a hell of a ride and and i honestly the celtics are probably my second favorite team in terms of how much i watch them and then uh you know them winning it all in 08 was was great too so not a lot of complaints even though right now it's tough i think we've finally yeah. gotten back to like normalcy where oh, it's like man, okay it's our teams aren't dominating. The Bruins are probably the best team right now um, with the Celtics hovering around 500. So it's been a hell of a journey, though. The Celtics are weird, man. Like, Odd. they be so good. <laughs> and then, like, I forgot who they played the other night. It was nobody, like, that they should have been in the same realm with. But they lost. Yeah. And I was just like, guys. I know we didn't have Jalen Brown, but I was like, guys, what is what is the deal here? Yeah, we can't be losing to the Sacramento Kings. Like, and the <laughs> Kings have some pieces. Yeah, they have some pieces, but it's like, come on. Uh, these West Coast trips, dude, I love them because I never go to sleep. Like, I just finished editing and posting the High and Bloom episode, I think, at 4 a.m. I was going to say last night, but that counts as this morning. Oh, um, so I do enjoy watching these late night games, West Coast trips. But it's just, as you guys know, everything is so much different with no fans. It's it just is. not it doesn't feel that like if you're yeah. playing the Lakers in LA and there's no one there, it's like, man, eh. yeah, like, that could is, be in Orlando. It would be the same thing. Yeah. yeah. yeah it is fine. There's no home court advantage. It's yeah. No. It's just odd. Not having that. Just travel. That's yeah. all it is. But yeah, just like Boston sports, you've been around it. Everything's dominated. What has been your favorite championship to celebrate either baseball, not, you know, we not hockey Celtics had one and then Patriots. Yeah. It's, um, it's got to be 04. The Red Sox in 04 has to be it just because of how much yeah. that meant. But in terms of like to celebrate, I'm now factoring in age. So like mm. celebrating wise, <laughs> I think my favorite was 2013 
because I remember going out drinking with my buddies that night. We ended up going to Fenway and Ryan Dempster was just chilling outside the park. Jacoby Ellsbury, like we just kind of uh, kicked it with some of the players for a little bit. And that was super cool. Yeah, um, so that one was probably up there. Uh, 2018 when the Red Sox won was a, a ton of fun, even though I'm still salty about that because they didn't win any of the series at home. Like no. I, I was weirdly rooting for them to lose in LA so they could win game six. I was going to be able to go to game six. My brothers both live in LA and they went to the clincher at game five. <laughs> yeah. My little brother, Brian, you know, bless his heart, but he only went to one game all year and it was one the they won the world series. I'm, I'm still salty about that. <laughs> I would be too. Um, but I'm telling you, that's the one thing that I look back on as a fan uh, especially with our podcast section 10 kind of blowing up uh, big time in 2018. Oh, yeah. I was like, this would be so perfect if Man. they could come home to Fenway win. we then go to like baseball tavern, our favorite places around Fenway, that would be a ton of fun, but they were too good. They were too good. They won on the road they were in, way too good in New York and Houston and in Los Angeles. And um, it just didn't happen. But yeah, 2013, I think is the one that sticks out because I was 23 and um, <laughs> it, that was a ton of fun. We, we had a blast oh, yeah. that night. Yeah. The, I think my favorite one is 18 because that's when I really like I was into baseball in 13 and then 18. I like followed the team the entire year because we came off 2017 and I was like, dude, this team, this team could do it. And then we, got, then we got Jay. Had a ton of talent, ton of talent. I, that's what I'm saying. And I was like, this team, this is going to be all right last, next year. And then uh, I was really pulling hard for him because Pedroia is my favorite player of all time. I was like, he just needs one more. He, like, just give him one more he deserves it so dude i'm telling you we were we were talking this last week uh basically since he retired and i'm pumped that you know he was able to come on our podcast that was a ton of fun yeah. but like the biggest thing that i was talking about is how funny it is that you can call him not funny but the fact that you can call him a three-time world series champion is kind of hilarious i mean he yeah. played six games in 2018 yeah. and then he got hurt but um still deserve hey it. It's the same as Gronk. I think Gronk got a free ring along the way. Like that's kind of how it, it goes. If you're if you played on the team, like technically, no more Garcia Parra has a ring with the Red Sox. So yeah. um, I have no issue yeah. with it. But um, it was tough, man. That last three or four years with Petey was tough. Yeah, yeah, it was. I didn't want it to end like that. He obviously didn't want it to end like that. But yeah, you know, the, there's only so much you can do. The Gronk one's funny. The Lashawn yeah. McCoy. The Lashawn McCoy too. Oh yeah. yeah. I forgot. Which I'm McCoy had a ring with the Chiefs and then this year with the Bucks. And he so didn't back play a to back game. Super Bowl champion. What a yeah. loser. But yeah, <laughs> I, the thing with Gronk, too, is like when Brady threw the first touchdown to Gronk, I was like, this game's over. This meant yeah. to be. This game is the vibe of that game was just off. Like the Chiefs were like, weird. wait a second, it's the Super Bowl. Like it's like they didn't realize the, the magnitude of the game. No, they didn't. Um, it was it was odd. And it really felt like a road game for them. Like I know it was in Tampa, but it was a Super Bowl crowd, and it's yeah. obviously a pandemic crowd. So, but it felt like they looked like they were on the road. It didn't look like they were on a neutral. They side. definitely were. So, we all know you work in the sports media side of things, and then you started. I don't know if you started out at Nesson, but you really started out at Nesson, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, yeah. I was doing internship like Endicott College in Beverly, Mass. It's a smaller school, but the thing I love most about it is they require three internships, and so I was able to intern at WEI. Um, able to intern at Comcast Sportsnet, which is now NBC Sports Boston. And then that kind of led to my job, me getting a job at Nesson as a production assistant for two and a half years. Uh, it was a ton of fun. That was a great time to exist. Had a lot of good friends there, was living with a lot of my friends. Finally, I got to move out of the house and live with my buddies. And it was, we kind of treated it like college, uh, you yeah. know, plus, <laughs> like it was basically just <laughs> extra college, years. Like, yeah, it was basically like grad school, but minus yeah. the school. So um, I did enjoy that a lot. We had a ton of fun. And then it was about time to part ways with Nesson. And I was just trying to look for whatever was next. That's when I reached out to Jared, seeing if they needed a producer for section 10. Um, they did, which is great. And, you know, ever since then, we've done 372 episodes of that podcast, which has been awesome. And um, yeah, the Bleach Report job came soon after that. It was a few months after that, that somebody noticed my resume and they said, oh, that's that kid's, uh, he does the section 10 podcast. And at that point that the show was young at that point, it was probably only 25 episodes in. Yeah. Um, but there was somebody that works there that recommended me because they saw my resume and, you know, knew me from the show. Right. And I started as an app programmer there, basically just doing everything for the BR app, which I think is the best one in sports uh, by far, honestly. And it's grown to this point of I kind of lead our AMAs now. The Ask Me Anything uh, segments we do with athletes of all sports. Sean McCoy, we actually did a couple months ago, which is funny you mentioned him. But um, I basically get to interview <laughs> all these these athletes with questions that people come up with in the app. 
And we try to, my goal and my favorite thing to do with that, to do with section 10, to do on the new WEI show I do with Rob Bradford is to try to get a story or a quote that no one else has. Like I, I lose my mind. Like that is a high for me. If we get like a segment or a quote or a, a sound bite that no one else has that they then that have to source us if, you know, other shows use yeah, it. That's so big time. it's huge. So we've gotten a lot of them for AMAs. LeVar Ball uh, was, he came on he was calling the Pistons raggedy for cutting his son. Um, he's, he's so and cool. then that quote went everywhere. <laughs> so like, it's, I love that stuff. I love it yeah. a lot. And then they know I'm good at it. So they've trusted me to do uh, everything with the AMAs there, but, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work. I mean, I kind of have three jobs now, but yeah. I do enjoy doing it for sure. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Wes. What were you going to say? Uh, so, oh, I was going to answer like the next question. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, were you about to say something? <laughs> no, I was waiting He's on advancing you, advancing the conversation. I like it. <laughs> I'll wait on you. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> um so i was gonna ask like what does your your job kind of entail like the bleacher report job so like kind of like your day-to-day -day. yeah basically yeah. Your day to day. so day-to-day -day, i lead our trending coverage for the app um that's basically we basically have a trending stream in the app keeping that updated making sure we have the top content in there getting alerts out to like the millions of people that follow it um i do a lot of work with our communities though we have a lot of communities within the app for teams so fan like we're trying to make the app as user friendly as possible so that people when they want to have sports th discussions that it all happens in there instead of maybe on twitter or somewhere else right um but yeah the amas are definitely a big part of it as well organizing which athletes are available to do the interviews uh setting it up putting getting you know putting promos together uh so people know where to ask questions we had devonta smith last week um who else do we have last week we had a couple Brian Fitzpatrick, he was really funny. He was sponsored by Mountain Dew and he was wearing this like Mountain Dew mask. I'm like, this he's, dude's, he's, the he's, man. he's a piece of work. He's, he's a cool dude. <laughs> um, but no, that, that's become a huge part of it. Uh, on average, we probably do two to three AMAs a week. And so I'm running those interviews and organizing who's helping us out, taking their answers down so we can then put right. them in the app like as the player. Um, but yeah, it's kind of an all encompassing thing. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it, but I think that's the one thing I've had to get good at is like balancing three, four, five different tasks at once. Uh, Cause it's a ton to do. And then on top of that, mm -hmm. doing all the section 10 stuff and, and making sure that we're advancing as a podcast and that we're growing that. So it's, yeah. it's, you know, a ton of work, but I definitely enjoy doing it. Now, are you doing all that from home? Yeah. yeah. Doing it all from home. Yeah. I'm, I'm back with my parents right now. I'm trying to just, cause I was living in New York city right. uh, for four years. Cause that's where bleach report is. And it's where barstool is. So we used to record, the podcast in there. And then I would go to BR for, you know, uh, five days a week. And we haven't been in the office there since what that first week of March. Yeah. I mean, we're coming up on a down. year. It's yeah. just nuts. So I know Barstool's back to work, which is weird. They've been in the office since like July 4th, uh, which I, I still think is kind of bizarre, but, yeah. um, but no, I've, I've just been York. back. Yeah. It's, I know it's just a weird move, but Hey, they got to do what they got to do. I get it. It's, it's tough times. You got to try to make your money how you can. Right. And um, so I've just been back home since uh, June, I think since like basically since the summer and yeah, it's a ton of fun. I, I, yeah. I, I have my own little like back house here. Um, yeah. My dad on the side has always like fixed up houses and um, he kind of made this like a house, <laughs> which is pretty sick. Hey, so that's nice though. I know I'm telling you rent free. It's great. Uh, I have no, <laughs> that's the no best complaints. Part. <laughs> I'm telling you, no complaints at all. But uh, yeah, a little further down the road, going to definitely be looking to get my own condo. But I don't, I can't commit anywhere right now because I don't know yeah. if we're going to go have to go back to New York City. Um, well, this, so for this, now, I'm just kind of chilling. This but, world is crazy right now. It's nuts. I, I have no idea where we're going to be even in like what? like Next June? month. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> and I, it's, yeah. it's why I coach football down here. Yeah. And how's that been during all this? That has to be oh, amazing. man. It like we're, our fall season got canceled. So okay. we are, we started our first day of football practice Monday and our season goes from February to April and play, playoffs in April, but yeah. they have to wear their mask underneath their, um, their helmet, but it has to be like, it has to be a mask that goes around the ears. It can't be one of those you pull up yeah, because of safety hazards and stuff. And then it has to be right there um they have to be every, every kid suffocates basically yeah, well really really and we're gonna have to, that's why we're like we're working on our sub formations right now and then like the 
where the players stand is going to be from 10 yard line to 10 yard line because they have to be six feet apart. Oh, it's going to be weird, man. Yes, I just it's about pointless. I mean, I'm stunned. Yeah, that's that's a good point. But like, I'm honestly stunned they got through the NFL season. Like, oh, I, I can't too. believe. And watching the Super yeah. Bowl like felt normal. Like, it didn't feel like weird. No. And you know, you see Brady up there, and then the the parade they had today. I mean, the parade's a little more iffy, where it's like, eh, okay. On the boats and uh, stuff. I get it that you're on the boats and whatnot, but it's still <laughs> there's a lot of people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, but they're just kind of like, yeah, whatever we've earned this. And that's kind of been the thing. Like I remember Justin Turner, you know, for the Dodgers getting COVID or getting a positive test during the clinching game of the world series. He still goes out there. It's one of those, like, "Mm, I don't know. That's a little, (laughs) a little weird. I remember that. Cause I was like, did nobody nobody care? It's and his teammates had his back. And I I respect that because we're talking about potentially, you know, life and death situations here, which this whole thing is so bizarre. I mean, it's, it's, I can't believe what what is it right now? It's like mid fit. We're basically mid February. Oh, I don't know. And Watch on. It's like February tenth. February tenth. Like what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> it it is February tenth. I guessed right. That was a real guess. That was pretty good. That was pretty All right. Good. Give you credit. So uh, yeah. we're gonna wrap it up with these. We call them quick hitters. It's just like quick questions. I like it. I like it. So it's gonna be like your favorite of stuff. So Wes, I'll ask one. You ask one. You got it. So I'm gonna start with right. uh, your yeah, favorite athlete good. of all time, King Griffey Jr. Absolutely, that was the easy one. I had it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all Go right. Ahead. So uh, your favorite place to eat in Boston? Ooh, favorite place to eat in Boston. Um, that's a great one. I don't eat in Boston too often. I would say Bleacher Bar, which is like literally underneath the bleachers mm-hmm. at Fenway. It's more not as much because of the food. It's more just like I can see into my favorite part. Yeah, the I scenery. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I've, yeah i've never i wish i would have gone in there i've only walked past it's worth going in and now that like our place was baseball tavern they tore it down because they're making huge condos there and i've been crying about it ever since but um our, i think our new place is going to be bleacher bar because it's just a great but it's like you're in the, i love that any ballpark that does like a in the park bar type of thing when you don't yeah. need a ticket i'm like i'll be there every time mm-hmm. especially fenway i mean come on <laughs> oh it's the best you're in the center fit you can see into the field i'm like this is the greatest this so i technically is... got to see a game last year i mean year. look at this you... <laughs> yeah i know I mean, i'm telling on. you come on like if fenway <laughs> is heaven <laughs> you're it's, there it's the it's the best place ever it does not yeah. get better than fenway park so yeah um we've been talking about boston sports if you weren't a boston sports fan what would be your favorite team outside of boston Ooh, um, I would say that's a good question. Um, I would say the Mariners just because of how many Mariners games I watched growing up with Griffey. Fair. Uh, that I would try to get like these out of market packages to watch, yeah. just to try to watch Griffey and watch his highlights. So, and because I like staying up late, so the late games wouldn't bug me either. I would go with the Mariners. Yeah. Which fun that's fact? I mean, they are of all okay. the four, they're the only major league team that has not made the World Series, which is yeah, hilarious because they, they've been around they've had forever. Good teams. I know. They you don't think of them players. as being crap. Like yeah. they're, of, I think of the four major sports, they have the longest playoff drought and that would probably stun everyone because yeah, they're never like trash. They're always just kind of like, they're there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They, what a, that has to be awful as a fan when your team's never garbage, but they're always just whatever. Like, no, imagine living. Yeah. Like, All right. Another yeah. Mariner season. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, feel so, like that, I feel like that's the, um, the Washington football team. Yeah. never never you, never garbage but like you never know like, all about that yeah hey, I, I like heineke i like heineke he, he looked good in the playoffs they almost not yeah. they almost got the bucks but they had a chance they had a chance against the bucks. they were closer in a lot of teams even the chiefs yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah and then the last one is what is your favorite sports moment it can be live or it can be you're watching on tv or just if you had to pick favorite, one to go through i'm gonna again. go live i'm gonna go live my favorite live moment was game two of the 2013 alcs um i i was working at nesson at the time it was very hard to get games off like because we had to cover those games for nesson we had to make do highlights all that stuff so finally got a game off and i was telling my roommate at the time mike i was like dude we got to go to the game tonight Sox were down 1-0 to the tigers in that series tigers were legitimate and if they had a healthy miguel cabrera they probably win that series but um you had scherzer verlander annabelle sanchez that rotation was filthy it was Scherzer Buckholes, I believe, was the matchup that night. And I'm like, eh, all right, we'll see how this goes. Um, and obviously down, Sox down five to one in the seventh inning. And and with two outs, Poppy comes up and hits a grand slam. I have never heard Fenway that loud or even close to that loud. Because it was like, all right, it was kind of 
it felt too good to be true. It's like, oh, oh no. so Poppy's going to come up and hit a grand slam That's here when they're down by four. Like, That's what it I just, thinking. I don't know. It was, so he hits it. We had standing room, like, behind uh, the home plate, like, grandstand. Yeah. And so we're ducking down, trying to see what's going on. And all we see is Tory Hunter's legs go flying, like, <laughs> and he goes sailing into the into the bullpen. And I was, uh, I, I was nervous he caught it for a second. I know. Like, I thought he caught it. And so everyone's yeah. going nuts. And I'm like, yo, did he catch it? Well, I'm still thinking, is if he comes up with that ball, we got to all shut up. Like, yeah. we shouldn't be celebrating. Wait, like, it's then over. it's the worst. <laughs> I know. But I'll never forget Poppy crossing the plate. Because we had a good view of the plate. Not as much, like, once it got further out in the field. But, yeah. and he was just so casual. And I'm like, this guy is a legend. No, like, I would not have been able to hold it together. That's like one of the biggest hits of of any Red and Red Sox history. And because oh, really? they don't win that series if they don't win that game. If they go down 0-2, they're not winning the LCS. Um, and he, him, I remember Pedroia's at the plate, and they just, you know, he's just cash. I'm like, this guy's a boss. Like this, that, this guy, absolute is. boss. <laughs> that, but that man, yeah. Poppy. That atmosphere was nuts. I'll never forget that moment. And I'm glad it was with my boy. I'm I'm the best man in his wedding coming up next summer. So oh, nice um i'm glad it wasn't with you know some scrub like i'm glad yeah, it, was, yeah. it yeah. was with like a real friend <laughs> some guy like, you never just, really like, spent a lot of time with <laughs> yeah. i know yeah. like re remember ted like why did i go to the <laughs> yeah. game with him um but no it's good that <laughs> it's good that it happened with like one of my guys so oh yeah um yeah that, that would be yeah. it that would definitely be it that's a good one i i ran out of my dorm room when that happened oh it's a that's wild moment best. wild <laughs> moment but yeah that's We'll wrap it up here, Steve. Um, we have, we appreciate you coming on, man. I know that. Yeah, for I, sure. I I listen to Section Ten. I'm, I don't miss an episode, and I'm I'm big into the Red Sox stuff. So obviously, I pay attention to what you're doing. So we we appreciate it. Absolutely. No, let's uh, actually have a competitive team. Maybe this hey, year. Maybe. <laughs> this one of the season. I don't know. You don't know what we can I do. I mean, they're gonna be one of the thirty teams, so they have a chance of winning the World Series. We're a top thirty I team. <laughs> top 30 team yeah, we're gonna... i'm gonna i'm gonna steal that i'm gonna steal <laughs> okay. that line red Sox, like don't don't quote me on this but they're top a top 30, 30 ball club. <laughs> top 30 ball club, top 30 ball club <laughs> in the uh, united states all right yeah. yeah steve we appreciate it man and we hope you're staying safe up there absolutely you guys too take it easy all right hope you enjoyed that interview with steve peralt it was a good one i know me and wes enjoyed it we wish luke could have been there i know after he listened yeah. to it he wishes he could have been there but Later on, when we Steve was kind of he's a busy man right now, so we only got a s selected amount of time. But maybe in the next, I don't know, if in the future, we're gonna get him on for a, a longer, longer episode. Hopefully, an in person interview. Yeah, we'd love to, which would be that. really cool. So that was Steve. Hope you enjoyed it. Let us know how how much you enjoyed it in the comments, or this one's gonna be on YouTube, so you can watch you can watch it. Yeah. And then, uh, so we'll move into our shout outs and all of our end of the episode stuff. So we got, um, I, I got shout out Steve, Steve Peralt. Yeah, that's a, that's a big one. Um, definitely a great interview with Steve. Oh, yeah. Um, but my shout out is going to be to, it's going to be the Super Bowls. Uh, how I mean, think about it. How great are Super Bowl Sundays, man? There's no other event like it. No, there's no, not. Like, there's not. Like, it, it just brings other, everybody together. What other game are you going to, like, cook all that food for? Yeah. Not hey, the I mean, finals. Exactly. Not the World yeah. Series. Not the NHL hockey playoffs. Not even the college football playoff. Yeah. I mean, seriously. It's on a Monday night. Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's just a, a great event. And another shout out is to all the people that uh, watched our live during yes. the Super Bowl. Uh, I think it was, I hate if you missed it, but it was a really fun event. And we had a lot of guests on the IG live that joined. And um, it, was, it was fun talking to some of the, some of our fans, some of our good friends, you know, so. Definitely not our last stream. And we're going to announce the sweatshirt winner on Instagram next week yes in the coming weeks so yes well next we have all the winners all the other giveaway winners will we've uh, already reached out to them yeah so and then the hoodie winner we will let you know we'll reach out to them and then also post it on our socials yes uh, i'd like to shout out jd martinez for being the sole member of my boston red sox jerseys that are still on the red sox 
Hurts. That that oh. one hurts. They traded Ben Attendee. Ben Attendee. Vets left last year. Yeah. Actually, in the interview with Steve, we he I he came in the Zoom call and he noticed my jersey. He said, "Who you got up there?" And then I showed him my other ones. And then we were talking before the interview. He was like, "Man, what's the deal with Ben Attendee? Are we gonna what are we gonna do with him?" Like. We were like, I don't know. It's been he's been rumored to be traded since December. As soon as we get off the Zoom call, Ben and Tenny's traded, and he texts me. And wow, it was, it was insane. That is that's crazy. That's crazy. But yeah, so shout outs, shout out everybody that was on the Zoom. Shout out Steve. Shout out Super Bowls. Luke, you got a quote? I sure do. Um, <laughs> the quote is from a guy named Rick Warren. Uh, it says, fear is a self-imposed prison that will keep you from becoming what God intends for you to be. You must move against it with the weapons of faith and love. There you go. Yeah. I think I think the uh, the quote part of our portion of the show is overlooked. It doesn't get talked about it. Yeah. All. I mean, I mean, you should. Yeah, I mean, it's an obvious reason to listen to the end of the show. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it's. All the sports knowledge you listen to in the, you know, in the middle of the show. And then at the end is where you get is where you get the the end is where we're our true selves. That's the that's the dessert, man. The like, end is who, total. No, the thing about our skip shows, dessert here, I'm going to go and break it down. The thing about our shows is everything before this part of the show is is scripted. Except yeah. this part, this part is unscripted. We don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. At the end like, of the we, show, like, but we, you got to stay to talk about. Yeah. But like whatever comes up at the end of the episode, we just go on like we are now. Yeah. I didn't even know I was going to talk about the Red Sox and Benintendi, but you know, um, yeah. So that's the way it works, man. That's the way it works, man. Uh, shout out fantasy football. Sorry, I made a dynasty trade last week, and I'm kind of nervous about it, but we'll see how yeah. it goes. Yeah. Just wanted to get that out there. So yeah, episode twelve with Bleach Report Steve Peralt. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It will uh, be on YouTube. Yes. We'll, put, we'll continue to post clips throughout the week on our socials until the next episode next Friday at 7 a.m. Luke, you got anything before we send them out of here? Nope. I just want to thank all the people that continued listening. And um, we'll see you, see you next week for episode 13. Yep. All right. Yep. All Peace. Right.